with or without foreskin. It's a topic men have discussed for ages, and for just as long, it's been wrapped in cultural, religious, and medical discussion. In today's society, where we have access to greater scientific knowledge than ever before, the discussion is often less about custom and more about health function and individual choice. So what's the correct answer? The reality is there isn't one. This video isn't here to declare what's correct, but to present you with the accurate evidence based facts so you can choose what's right for you. We're going to slice through the confusion and examine the natural purpose of the foreskin, the well-studied benefits of its removal, the possible drawbacks involved, and the specific clinical reasons why the procedure could be more than an option. It might be essential. By the end, you'll have a much clearer picture to help guide your decision. Before we dive in, if you care about clear, honest men's health advice, hit subscribe and tap the bell now. That way, you won't miss practical tips that could protect your performance, your comfort, and your long-term health. To begin, let's cover the fundamentals. What really is the foreskin and what does it offer? The foreskin, medically known as a prepuce, is a loose fold of skin that typically covers the head of the penis, a part called the glands. At birth, it's attached to the glands and usually becomes fully movable over time, typically by teenage years, but it's more than just a simple area of skin. It carries several physical functions. First is hygiene. Because a circumcised penis displays an exposed glands, it is generally easier to keep clean. This stops the collection of a thick, white material made up of old skin and oily body fluids. While smegma is harmless and can be easily cleaned off, poor male hygiene can allow its buildup, which can trigger odor and create a space for germs, leading to swelling and infections. This leads us to the second key benefit, a lower chance of some infections. The region under the foreskin may hold moisture and bacteria, raising the danger for a condition known as balanopostis, which is a swelling of both the glands and the foreskin. Research has also discovered that circumcision in babies can greatly reduce their chance of getting urinary tract infections, especially within their earliest year of life. The third and possibly best supported benefit is a lower chance of getting certain sexually transmitted infections. This is where the evidence turns very convincing. Numerous major, large-scale, randomized, controlled studies, including landmark trials, printed in leading medical journals like The Lancet, were carried out in regions of Africa, where STI rates are higher. The findings were repeated and obverse. Male circumcision was proven to lessen the chance of getting here through heterosexual intercourse by as much as 60%. The studies didn't end there. These reports also found a real drop in the spread of HPV, the human papillomavirus, which can bring on genital warts and is a leading factor for cervical cancer in women and penile or throat cancer in men. Plus, there was a proven reduction in the likelihood of getting herpes simplex virus, HSV2, the virus behind genital herpes. It's believed this protective edge comes from the nature of the inner foreskin, which is thin uncaratinized and packed with immune cells that HIV and other viruses use to invade the body. Removing this soft tissue removes a main doorway for infection. Still, and this is a vital fact to grasp, circumcision cuts the risk. It does not erase it. It is not a shield or a replacement for safe sex routines. Wearing condoms is still the most reliable way to stop the transfer of STIs. Last, there's a decreased chance of penile cancer. Though penile cancer is extremely uncommon in Western countries, its causes are closely tied to long-term swelling, weak male hygiene, and HPV infection. Since circumcision improves male hygiene and reduces the rate of HPV, it is strongly associated with a lower lifetime chance of developing this specific cancer. Naturally, like every medical decision, this isn't a one-sided matter. No surgery comes without its negatives. So, what are the possible risks and drawbacks of circumcision? The most immediate is that it's an operation. And like any operation, it brings a series of basic risks, even though they are typically very low when done by a skilled provider in a clean setting. These risks involve pain, 
both at the time and after the procedure, especially in the early recovery stage. There's also a risk of bleeding and infection at the incision area. Occasionally, there may be an unsatisfying cosmetic effect, such as scarring or the removal of too much or too little skin, which might lead to a corrective surgery later. The most commonly discussed drawback is a chance for change sensation. As said before, the foreskin is filled with nerve endings that help with sexual sensitivity. Removing this part will, by definition, change the way the penis feels. The glands, now always exposed, will undergo something called keratinization, where the skin thickens a bit and becomes less sensitive as time passes. While many circumcised men describe full and satisfying sex lives without any noticeable problems, some people do say there's a change or drop in sensitivity that they believe lessens their sexual experience. This is a deeply individual matter, but it's a real factor to consider. In the end, taking away the foreskin also means losing its natural shielding and lubricating functions. The glands will always be exposed to the rubbing of clothes, which leads to the keratinization effect mentioned earlier. And while we're on the sensitive subject of penis health and sexual function, it's important to recognize that for lots of men, concerns reach beyond just a foreskin. They connect to the real challenge of achieving and keeping a strong, dependable erection. Are you finding these clinical signs useful? Type one if these insights help, or zero if you'd like us to cover other topics. Your input helps shape what we cover next. All right, now let's return to our big question and discuss the exact medical situations when circumcision is no longer just a decision, but a definite necessity. So after considering every benefit and risk, how does anyone actually choose? When is surgery truly the right path? The answer is clear. It relies completely on your unique circumstances. There are specific cases where circumcision is not only a choice, but a definite medical suggestion. The most usual is a condition named phimosis. This is when the foreskin is too tight to be pulled back over the glands. In mild cases, it might be manageable, but in more severe situations, real phimosis can make good male hygiene impossible, cause repeated infections, and bring significant pain during erections or sex. A connected but more urgent issue is paraphimosis. This is a true emergency where a tight foreskin is pulled back but then gets trapped behind the head of the penis and can't be moved forward again. This acts like a band, stopping blood flow to the glands and needs fast medical care to stop serious tissue injury. Additionally, for men who have regular infections such as balanopostis that don't, respond to creams or better cleaning, circumcision is often the final solution. For all others, the decision is much more personal. For parents of a newborn, the choice is often based on tradition, religious beliefs, or preventive health ideas. For an adult without health problems, the choice is usually personal, balancing the likely health benefits with the risks and the wanted cosmetic outcome. To sum up, the foreskin has basic useful jobs, but its removal brings important, scientifically proven health benefits, especially in cutting the risk of some serious diseases. On the other side, it's a surgery that comes with risks and permanently changes the body. The choice isn't simple or universal. It's a complicated decision that should be made with a full understanding of both sides. If you have pain, discomfort, trouble with retraction, or any other questions about your foreskin, the best thing you can do is talk to a doctor. A urologist can do a physical exam, check your personal anatomy, and give you advice based on your health and your needs. This is a talk that needs to be had with a medical professional, not just based on online opinions or personal stories. Now, if this helped you better understand your options, pause for a second and hit subscribe. We share real respectful tips for men who want control over their health, not confusion. Tell us in the comments what part stood out or helped you most. We love hearing from you. Your stories fuel us to keep sharing powerful men's health tools. So don't forget to like, comment, and share this with someone who needs it.